There's a place at the core of it all Where the tails and the glasses are equally tall The chances you've heard one he hasn't are slim Welcome to Grimm's, I'm Grimm Welcome to Grimm's, I'm him Yeah, I'll be with you in a second. There's some other people coming in. How's it going? It's been a little while, but I know where to pick up. I'll jog your memory for you. Don't worry about it. Welcome to Grimm's. I'm Grimm. Thank you for joining us for our fourth episode of our Ravnica-themed Dungeons & Dragons Woo, episode campaign. four! <laughs> we've got a few hooligans in the bar today. We've got Chris, we've got Saren, there's Lisa, oh. and last but not least, Mark. Hey. Uh, oh, we've also, in addition to those guys over there, we've got lovely sponsors boop, 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 all over the place. Uh, they're fantastic. They're super great. Give them a look-see. They definitely deserve it. Um, they're helping us out a lot. So links are in the description. Go and click on those and uh, check them out. They're, they're good things. That's why we're using them. Mm -hmm. um, and on the note of sponsors, we've actually got... Arcana Vault, who have provided us with these lovely, mysterious booster packs of yeah, dice. Pack Unfortunately, <laughs> the best ones so far I didn't really get to roll, but I still got to give them away to the player of the game last time. And hmm, hmm, hmm. I gotta say, I think it's. it's <laughs> yeah. You know what? I am gonna hand them over to. Oh, that's so good. And the various. Yay! Yay. This is so nice. Yeah, I actually like this one. Like bone dice. They're, yeah, they're pretty cool. They're so good for you. Bone dice! <laughs> yeah, you can't see them. And a DM needs his dice. So, next mystery pack. Open this one up. Da, 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 da. So far, they've actually managed to like keep getting better somehow. Yeah. I keep thinking that it's going to be the oh, yeah. ceiling. I really hope these ones are. Ooh, see? They did it again! What is they're it? always so freaking cool! Which oh my it? god! Really? It's like Nebula! Ooh. It's like a space oh, is it the gas cloud. Ones? Oh my gosh. What a space gas cloud. I love them. <laughs> okay, you guys get to see these ones. Space gas cloud. These are so cool. <laughs> oh, that was actually Oh, cool. those are so pretty. Oh, wow, cool. They like sparkle like stars and stuff. Mm. Why isn't that nifty? Oh, that, nice. that is cool. Gold. I love the gold. Mm. Match Lisa's horns. They do. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Well, I'm we good. Sorry. that's okay. We're just showing you how unprofessional we are. That's that's just how the galaxy sounds, you guys. Yeah. yeah. The dice <laughs> speaking to us. <laughs> you guys don't have that? I have that on the top. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to organize these like a weirdo. In time. In time. I'll get there, guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so now that we've got our sponsors given their, uh, given their very properly earned due, um, we can get into the recap from our last episode. In episode three, you guys were taken into the south palm of the Mitz by um, Gilderoy, who is in charge of the guildless population in this area. He walked you through until you guys got up to the Chamber of the True Pact. And once you were let inside, you guys were kind of given some hospitality, and you were able to see the Council of the True Pact members who actually selected you. And you kind of found out which guilds you are more or less intended to go towards, or that they think you'd fit with, anyway. So, um, Andavarius, you managed to meet Grigory, who's in charge of the Golgari, and you sketched his lovely personage, <laughs> more fungus than man at this point. Actually, he's not man at all, he's an elf. So, yeah, you oh. actually got a bit of, um, uh, of his flesh that you've oh. kind of mushed into a poison. That's uh -huh. hot. <laughs> yeah. Zeralia, you, you managed to meet the live and lovely aging, but doesn't show it one bit Ramos, uh, who represents the Rakdos within, uh, within this area. And you guys were being just goofballs together, <laughs> doing all kinds of weird poses on your chairs and throwing food in each other's mouths. It was wonderful. Uh, Tallulah, you actually, uh, went aside to kind of talk uh, a little bit more closely and intimately with Isabel, who is the head researcher uh, at the Izzet Labs here. Oh. And she was saying that she picked you because she very much admired your determination. Um, and we can't forget that Veneer had a non-existent conversation, mm -hmm. uh, as far as these guys are concerned, 
uh, with Dimitri in charge of the Demir within the area. Um, yeah, talking about the true goal of what the Demir should be. And if it's not the true goal, then well, by golly, it should be. Yeah. Yeah, so that's more or less where we left off with you guys talking to the people who chose you, um, talking to Gilderoy about how you're going to be working with him until mm -hmm. you've earned your place into the actual guilds properly, mm -hmm. uh, and how you guys have some room that's been made available for you, as well as a bunch of supplies. So you guys went and spent the rest of the evening relaxing, collecting yourselves physically, mentally, spiritually, getting ready for this new life that has come at you fast. And that's where we will pick up with you guys having a nice little sleep. I think I was that drunk. Probably felt <laughs> a little good going to bed. Yeah, I, yeah. Would, uh, I would say you started feeling it. Yeah. <laughs> we woke up the time. All right. <laughs> and you guys are each in your own individual little rooms. As the sun comes up, these rooms of yours actually have a window on each of them, so if you wanted light, you can kind of let it in to illuminate your surroundings and give you a nice kind of warm feeling as you as you wake up. Is there anything that you guys would like to do in particular as you get ready to tackle the day? I'm going to look out the window for a little while, and the people watch, and kind of soak up the environment around me, from what I can see out of the window at least. Yeah. Get a feel for things so that I can kind of map some stuff out of my head, know where I am, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah, as you as you open this window uh, and look out from this particular point of view, this isn't one that you normally have. Um, it's pretty darn hard to, to sneak around into these places in particular. Um, you've been curious as to what's in them and who's where and uh, stuff like that before, but you're mostly confined to the Dimir section, which is actually underground. It's yeah. underneath for the first couple layers of the myths. Cool. So you're not used to seeing your community from above and seeing it all kind of hustle and bustle with life in this way. It's different to you. Okay. Right. I'm just going to be polishing up my little rig. Nice. Get it all clean, especially with the introduction yesterday of looking just like crazy. Awesome. So you wake up and give everything a twice over, tighten everything that needs tightening. Yeah. Uh, you realize that Stick some of them you can on. try to tighten and they just keep going in circle. Yeah, the threads are stripped. <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. eh, you kind of use it as like a tack, almost <laughs> like uh, the, the friction will hold it in there. <laughs> well, as long as it's stuck to on, I, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so uh, you're working on your rig and you polish up this old piece of Mizium gear that you managed to yeah. rip out of some steamworks <laughs> that were down in the Undercity. This thing. Uh, despite the rest of the piping and tubing that you found it in being corroded and rusted and ready to give way, this thing seems to be in the same condition as when it was first installed. It gleams with a hell of a lot of possibility to someone like you. It's a psychoreactive alloy, so it can be transformed into whatever you force it into being, but nice. in its current state, this is a complex contraption and it has all kinds of weird and wonderful implications as it is. Psycho-reactive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. That was like my ex. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything uh, that uh, End of Our Race Yeah, I'll just like uh, put on my fungal armor. Mm. Maybe notice a little bit of growth has kind of started on it overnight. So I'll just have my little pet beetle Gaston just go trim up the little edges on it. Yes. You know, whatever's mm -hmm. growing. So he gets a nice little meal and I get my armor nice and polished. Nice. Mm. Very good. And yeah. Then I'll go go wake up uh, these guys. I'll go to their respective rooms and just bang bang. I'll already be awake. I'll be playing my uh, violin, some <laughs> upbeat sort of uh, music to give me a little energy boost in the morning. Nice. I need to practice nice. too. <laughs> I need to practice. Well, I hear that, so I'll go to her room first. Mm hmm. Yeah. So uh, you wake up and you're getting ready to whip these guys into shape. You might not necessarily enjoy what you're being forced into doing, but you're gonna do it damn well. It's what mommy would want. <laughs> you know, you, you put on a brave face, and as you stand out into the hallway, and you're getting yourself psyched up, there's some almost soundtrack, almost your own theme song playing for you. Dun, 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 and you're like, yeah, I can do, I can oh, do this. Oh, she's awake. <laughs> you realize that the theme song is actually being provided to you courtesy of the party bard. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we have one of those. Uh, so, yeah, you kind of walk down the hallway. Uh, there are a couple people who approach you uh, and ask if there's anything that you require. Some people are letting you know that, you know, don't worry about it. You don't have to ask. Breakfast is already going to be brought to you and provided uh, to shortly. What's that? Brought to us at our rooms? Uh, it's brought to you wherever you want it to be. Yeah. These people are nothing if not accommodating. They're they're willing to meet your needs. That'd be, that would be wonderful. Awesome. Uh, but that's it, yeah. Okay. Talk to the help. <laughs> I think you uh, get a knock on the door then. Yep. De- de- de. Hello. Sveria. Sandovarius. Oh, come in, come in. Door's locked. Apparently it's not locked, I come in. Oh, okay, awesome. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? Uh, pretty well. You pretty sleep well. okay? I did. did, thank you. Uh, it's a little hard for me sleeping above the surface like this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Somehow it feels claustrophobic, if that makes any sense. Not to me, but... I know, it's just the... Wide open spaces makes me feel a little weird. <laughs> oh. Dixie Chicks is Oh, uh, what's on the agenda today? Well, I think we should probably figure out uh, what exactly we are doing for this guild. You know, actually mm. make a plan and try yeah, to help them. it wasn't very specific. <laughs> but I think he, we should probably get better outfitted first. Okay. I mean, I'm sure Do I you could, have something in mind? Well, I could get some better armors for maybe, maybe yourself as well. That, that leather armor. I've seen better days. Okay. You know a good shop or something? Well, my mother, down below by our fungal farms, uh, she actually makes this kind of armor. Uh, She's quite good at it too, so I'm sure she has a few sets lying around that maybe we could borrow. (laughs) They're, they're, uh, they're strong, they're, they're hearty. Oh. Yes. They're very good. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. And if you're into the fashion, you know. It does look pretty cool. Yeah. I like it. I think I could rock one yeah. of those. Yeah. I think we could get Vinny to wear one. I can run the car. Someone say my name! <laughs> <laughs> Someone say my name! How That's does, some good hearing. <laughs> how does he do that? Yes. Inside my room. Yeah, yeah, great. Door wide Probably open. Probably listening <laughs> the door. Yeah. 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 I was just standing there. You guys are horrible perceptionists. It's a weird. <laughs> Come on in. Ah, <laughs> oh, thanks. I want to find you. Ruining the moment. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. there, there wasn't a moment. We were just discussing oh. what to do for the day. Anything you had in mind? Yeah, I'm going to see if I can get that eyeball. Because that's a big one. Mm-hmm. Big check on mine this Why do you need a big eyeball? Ah, I don't. But, my knee. <laughs> right? Yeah. A big eyeball? No, a big one. Well, we'll see. I guess, right? There's different things with different sized eyes. Beggars can't be choosers, right? <laughs> what kind of eye did you ask for? Uh, wasn't quite that specific, but you know, you never look, look a gift eye in the mouth. You <laughs> were going to get an eye to lick. Something but a horse and some mouth. Uh, what? I'm not quite sure what the saying is, but basically, if you get it for free, don't, don't complain about it. Well, if we're all uh, giving you up and talking about it, I'm going to go wake up. Uh, Toluda, and I get her in on this as well, I guess. I'll, I'll, I'll go out and go to her room. Yeah. Toluda, you awake? Yeah, I'm awake. We're all Hi. having a little uh, discussion here on uh, oh. the events for the day, if you'd like to join us. Of, of course, what were you talking about? Would you, would you just come? Okay. I'm yourself? just going to use the Rania's bathroom <laughs> from down the hall. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, I think we should probably wait like five minutes. Just, okay. just, yeah. Or maybe we could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you guys are out in the right, hallway. We'll wait five minutes. Um, <laughs> no, we'll go over. I'm just joking. Yeah. So. The, uh, the staff, they actually <laughs> give you guys what you need. They even start, like, bringing out little stools and stuff for you uh, in order to, like, put it into a room, wherever, whichever one you guys choose to meet at. There are also larger kind of. Uh, rooms that aren't actually for people sleeping in, but so that you guys can actually meet. There are all kinds of books with uh, different kinds of knowledge, lore, bestiaries, maps, all kinds of things that are at your disposal that you guys can meet in. But if you just want to meet in 
Zarelia's room that yeah. Veneer is um, currently hold using. Hold on, do we have bathrooms or is it just like a chamber pod? That he was uh, <laughs> no, you guys do have actual bathrooms. That's the thing, like, the Izzet are a goofy bunch of smart idiots, but they do actually yeah, have plumbing. to serve a purpose. They're magically inclined okay, so and enforced. Okay, so he's just not sitting in the corner <laughs> while we're all talking. Yeah, oh, they, God. they have okay with it. magically enhanced plumbing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's great, because they're going to need it. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> too much wine last night. Yeah. Vinny, you done? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Come out, stretch. You heard no water running, but... Yeah. <laughs> you just gotta hope that you don't get the steam bidet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead, so that's a pun out of it. Deck save. Yeah. <laughs> steam bidet sounds exciting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, awesome. So you guys are in the room eating your, your breakfast. I, One plate I, I is empty. I my just... breakfast. <laughs> so, well, Kalula, is there anything you'd like to do today? Um, we were just talking about getting outfitted with some better armor uh, oh, down nice. at, on my farm. Because my mother makes these kinds of mushroom armor. If you'd oh, wow. like to join us, or if there's something else you'd like to do. Uh, I'd like that. I can't really wear it. But I'm too small to, but... Get me. you a nice hat, maybe. <laughs> Can you make her, like, something smaller? Yeah, uh, like a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the fashionable t shirt. Yeah, make fun of sorceress. The t shirt. You can, like, put a nice belt around it. I think it. You, would, you wouldn't be able to move under the weight. <laughs> and I honestly I'll don't think she's made anything your size. Weight of mushroom? She should. A whole range of things just for me. Yeah. I'll be the one well, to buy it, so. Talk to her about that. Maybe you can commission her. <laughs> I have a question. Piece. She makes, like, oh, outfits God. and, like, individual pieces and stuff, right? Yeah. Does she make anything, like, special? Like really sneaky shoes. Mm, she's not an enchantress. Uh, you probably have to go somewhere else for that. Yeah, well, we can go anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maybe you could get a really cool hat. Yeah. You should get a great looking hat. A mushroom hat. Yeah. yeah. Big cap. <laughs> it's like a beret. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cover up some of that uh, scarring. Hey, yeah, oh, it's no, beautiful it's good. scarring. It's it's There's deliberate. Is. I thought it was totally <laughs> intentional. <laughs> yeah, it is intentional. Yeah, it's, it's a very heat. cool look. It's awesome. very in fashion this season. Yeah. Well, I don't get it, but it's nice. It's okay, your mom will get it. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll, talk, talk, talk. There's a little bit of a knock at your guy's door, um, and you can hear someone like putting some. There's some clinking of glass and stuff as they're putting some things down into the it. door. Uh, you got anything to drink? <laughs> you open it up, and yeah, you realize that this person is dropping off some things that you guys can drink. Uh, they're rather small vials um, of a very concentrated, near fluorescent green liquid. Um, uh, yeah, so I heard that you guys uh, put in a requisition for a healing potion. So yeah. these are for you. Yeah. Uh, oh, that right. mine. Thank you. Right. And uh, somebody asked um, for some kind of poison. I, I grabbed what I could. Which one's the poison? <laughs> oh, oh, the poison is the one that looks like death. I mean, uh. this is the black sludge one. Mm. That makes sense. <laughs> so uh, hands that over to you and goes, uh, by the way, I don't know if you're going to make that request often, uh, but now that we're expecting I it... probably I, will, yes. That's good. I, I told them to start working on something a little bit more special, just so that we don't have to rush and scrounge for it. So we should have some more uh, potent things for you uh, going forward. Perfect. I'm sure we will need it. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, there was... Ah, there's a knife here. Uh, that's for... Is that right? Oh, you yes. Wanted the dagger? Right. Thank you. And what else is that? Oh, yeah. And he kind of pulls out this, like, thing wrapped in, like, cheesecloth. <gasps> and he just kind of... Um, uh, this is for you. Uh, kind of opens it up. You can see that this thing is a, like a rotten eyeball. It was pulled oh, out of a. It's a human eye that is not fresh. Oh. It is used. <laughs> it's a used human eye, not fresh. So, so. <laughs> perfect, good enough for me. Great, thank you. Yeah, right. Gonna wrap it back up in the thing, and put it in my pocket. Alchemists and stuff, potion makers, weird and wonderful ingredients. He's not an alchemist. Well, I don't need to know that. All right. Uh, if there's anything else you guys need, feel free to ask. I'm here. If not, any one of us out in the hall will do. Thank you. Nice. All righty. Uh, actually, while you're here, uh, could you prep my beetle? Uh, seems like we'll be going soon. If you could bring her around. Yes, sir. I can Make absolutely sure do that. Make sure she's fed, tickled. 
a tickle, sir. Uh, yeah. She just likes a little tickle. Right on her It's his side. wife. Maybe just don't do the tickling part. <laughs> Alchemists, right? I-, I work with uh, a lot of very unique individuals here. You guys are pretty darn unique. Thank you. Thank you. She will be tickled, Thank sir. You. Great. Take she will care be of your very wife pleased. <laughs> just <laughs> not my wife. <laughs> just my faithful companion. Yeah. Oh, God. She's fine. life partner. She's fine for a divorce, so it's still bit high to say wife, but I mean, yeah. Awesome. So this guy confusedly starts walking off, and he hands off the empty containers to someone else. He's like, I gotta go tickle a beetle. So <laughs> he starts heading towards the That was the my job for the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Is there anything else that you guys need to discuss or, or get? You guys are left to your own devices for now. His beetle is being prepped. Animal's being roused. Anything? If we're going down under, then I'm going to get a little lunchbox. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Meals to I go. Well, yeah, because, yeah. like, mushrooms. It's just going to all be mushrooms it down is, there. It is all mushrooms. <laughs> and, and some pretty old corpses. Yeah, so definitely lunchbox. Awesome. Cute little cakes. Yeah, that's one thing that these guys have in spades. Um, They kind of throw some things together and start doling those out to you guys. Mm -hmm. You guys have a full travel meal uh, all packed away for you. Awesome. Anything? I'm going to pick the girliest of lunchbox. The girliest looking lunchbox? The, the lunchbox is whatever pouches or bags you have on your person. It's just a, a bunch of food that's kind of like wrapped up. It was like a Hello Kitty lunchbox. <laughs> I will give you this. You do see that some of these were folded by a guy who couldn't give two shits, and the other one was folded by either someone very new and who actually still cares, or like a nice little girl packaged it and just tucked it all in and folded it neatly. Oh, a little bow on it. Yeah, 100% one of the bow one. I'll take one of the shittiest looking ones. See yeah, oh cute little... <laughs> All right, awesome. You guys all have your lunch. Yeah. So you're bringing your violin today? You're going to well, play some, some songs while we travel? Yeah. If that's what you would yeah. like, it, I would be happy to. This, this, this is a few hours travel to get there, maybe even half the day. Uh, you're all ready? All, all I'm not fed? going to play the whole time. It'll be a long time. <laughs> I can play. Perfect. Can you? What do you play? That dried up. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, it's good. Here we go. Well. Ah, uh, yes, you can accompany my songs with that. That'd be great. Roll a performance. <laughs> I mean, if we got hours and hours to go, 13 plus. Oh, my God. Two. There's a 15. On you the- passed 15. Yeah. Uh, as he plays it, you're like, what an uncouth barbarian. But he does have that nail. <laughs> the most yeah, bad body armed <laughs> so noises I have ever heard. He's Thanks. quite proficient at <laughs> the armed fights. Spend a lot of time alone drinking, oh come up with some weird ways to entertain. <laughs> You're welcome. Great, so we're all stuck together, huh? Yeah. All right. Yes, it's going to be quite an adventure. Awesome. Let's, let's go. Now, uh, yeah, Annabelle is prepped, ready to go. She's all hitched up. Uh, they've got your wagon there, and the wagon's been emptied of the kind of leftover goods. It's been cleaned and scoured. Annabelle seemingly has been given a lot of a Take lot us. of attention. Yeah. Um, the shell is gleaming like almost never before, yeah. as these people have gone to great lengths to actually take care of her. Um, they might be glib about it, but ultimately, you guys are due a certain amount of respect, even in this um, kind of early stage of your induction into this group. I would like to tickle Annabelle. <laughs> yeah, so you walk up to Annabelle and get you, get you, get you. And just, uh, it's weird. There's like a delayed response as you tickle. Nothing seems to happen until she notices you there doing it. And then she <laughs> kind of Oh, yeah, there you, go. there you go. There you go. Good beetle. Good girl. Awesome. You guys all hop onto the cart. I'm happy. <laughs> all right, Annabelle, uh, Take us home. Off she starts to crawl. Uh, You make your way down a uh, different um, one other than the Selesnian one. You guys are actually closer to a Rakdos finger at this point because that's in the middle area. And this one here isn't so much a platform that kind of lowers up and down. It is 
the, the thinnest ropes and strings and like meshing and wiring that you can see. You can see through it to the floors below. It's like dangling and almost spinning in places. You like have to time it as you ride on. And it starts to like tilt and lean. Oh God. Oh, the whole thing is an interesting experience. This is fun. Uh, I've never put this much weight on it before. So we'll what? see how this goes. Why don't you just be fine, it's okay. Animators. Like he is it. <laughs> Perfectly safe. It's good. Yeah, uh, keep you going. do see that there is a, a, a master at this craft who is actually almost playing the lift, its counterweights and balances like an instrument, and he's cackling and laughing as each time you guys step and it like whoa, just as you think it's gonna fall over the end, he's pulling on different levers and untying different knots, securing others. It's this it's a whole little play in and of it's itself. Comforting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> As you guys are standing there, down you go. Pulls one and just pulls die, <laughs> and it's really not as bad as you think. It's like, <laughs> and it's a nice descent, and you just hear him <laughs> cackling from above. Thank until you, you go down. <laughs> He looks over. <laughs> uh, you guys land on the ground floor and start to make your way uh, toward the Golgari Finger, where there is a lift operated by a goofy little goblin. Um, not much more sane than Claude. Um, Give me nightmares. Who brings you down <laughs> directly <laughs> into the Undercity by a dead bridge chasm. Awesome. So you guys pull your way through until you realize that, you know, Flender is there, the lift is up at the ground floor here, and he is tending to his troop of iron shell beetles that operate these small little wheels. This whole thing is rather rickety, and you have the impression that Claude is probably a lot more um, skilled at operating his <laughs> lift than than Flender the Goblin, who's just kind of, even with his small amount of weight, it's like, ee, ee, oh, don't step on that board. <laughs> He's just like, <laughs> and you can see that he gives his beetles scratches too, but his sharp little goblin nails like mark their shells. So he just kind of getting them ready, feeding them stuff. And a various, and a various. He's hopping. Hello, Flander. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, uh, good to see you again. Yeah, I, I need your business, so... Uh, getting a lot of traffic these days. Mm, no, not really, no. Really? I mean, most people take the stairs. You're the one who brings goods up. It's really just mostly me. This mm. whole thing for me. Well, no, not, not just you. I mean, I do get traffic, but it's not... It's business ain't booming, I guess. Who are you bringing up? <laughs> People? I don't know. <laughs> Lots okay. of crates, mushrooms. <laughs> uh, well, the four of us will be going down and we'll probably be returning maybe uh, later in the evening or tomorrow sometime. Hmm. All right. Oh. Well, if I'm not drowning in customers looking to go <laughs> to and from the midden heap of the Undercity, then I'll see what I can do about lining things up. Just try to make time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. And as he blinks, it's like... <laughs> like one eyelid down and then the other with his big bulgy eyes. All right, hop on, hop on. Come, 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 come. So you guys get onto this thing. <laughs> it's a little slippery with all the moss on it, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. And he just <laughs> carries on, kind of knocking with like a little hammer, some splinter of wood with like a bunch of spare nails that he has, just kind of hitting onto it. All right, um... Uh, hands, uh, feet, and uh, and heads uh, inside the lift at all times. Uh, a few feet back actually is probably preferable. Ready? Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, uh, payment, 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 payment. Uh, I'm going to need... Hmm. Why does this guy need payment? The other guy didn't need payment. Yeah. They did this. <laughs> well, Claude knows me, so, I mean... Well, yeah, but he knows him. him. Well, I mean... Uh, go ahead and roll. <laughs> Actually, you've got a, a very strong passive insight. Yeah. 20. Um, when he says payment, you have a sneaking suspicion that he has formalized the tipping process. Ah. So it's like you're forced to pay a certain percentage. <laughs> I uh, see how it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give him a copper. <laughs> <clears throat> rules are rules, I suppose. Not necessary. I mean, life. Death. Oh. What does it mean? Oh. Yeah, I'll, give, what? I'll give him my usual two copper. 
Uh, I'll say goblin. Like, I'm sorry for my friend. I give him free copper. Nice. <laughs> you speak goblin? Yeah. I'm little. I'm going to learn the language of the little cool. people. So, awesome. so good. Yeah, I will so. give him two copper as well. Perfect. He takes the coins from the bunch of you guys, looks them over, and kind of gnaws on them and puts them away. All right. And he takes this, like, comic little mallet. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. please, slowly. Mm. <laughs> uh, Sorry. I took out some of the some of the brakes and stuff so that we could do this as quickly as possible. Just do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> He hits the, the, the peg out. Um, you have a feeling that there's a little bit of a war going on between Flender wanting speed and the people who actually want to live while using this thing. Because as it like it like drops jarringly, there are parts where it goes and you guys like hit like a, a bunch of gook kind of gunk and slime and oozes in all four of the corners that like hold on to it a little bit and you're like and he starts hitting them like, oh look out, look out! Oh my god, this is exciting. You're going down again, fast. Yeah. I'm going to uh, hold tightly onto the fender because clearly he's the only person that's always surviving this. Yeah. So. You hold on, you just... These <laughs> <laughs> little green oh cheeks god. go brown uh, as he blushes. Um, as this thing is like... <laughs> kind of fits and stops and fast, then slow. Um, you guys... I'm going to have you all roll a perception check. Actually, God, Veneer, your perception is so freaking 20. nuts. It, yeah, it's, tw- it's 20 passive, but with evidence, it's still 14. 15. I got 11. 16. Okay, we've got three people that clear it. So you're holding on to Flender, who's like, <laughs> and he's kind of giggling and cackling with excitement. So you don't quite hear, but you guys do. And it's not just you guys who are like, help, stop. There's someone else a few floors down going, Stop the lift! Stop the lift! We need help! Slow it down! As you guys are kind of, kind of going down, down, down. What are you guys going to do? Does Flunder have like a thing oh, that he can pull? Uh, yes, there are these kind of contraptions attached to each of the wheels for the beetles uh, right now that aren't moving since they're not kind of chugging it upwards. But if you get those beetles kicking in the opposite direction, it'll start to slow its momentum like brakes and then start to lift it up. Okay, I'm okay. going to yell at Andy. Get that corner, I'll get this corner. It's a square, right? Right. <laughs> Just to make sure it doesn't go like whatever. Okay. Yeah. And, uh... Can we do it? Can we make the beetles do their thing? What? Absolutely. Go okay. ahead and do an animal handling check. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's a six. <laughs> That's a 12. All right. So you guys jump off the cart to eat, like, two of the corners, and uh, you kind of, like, just start punching this <laughs> beetle, like, go! I don't go! know! <laughs> It, the stupid thing doesn't want to move. You're giving it a kick. You're punching it. You're no, but spanking no, it. No, not like that. Um, you have to be gentle. This is an iron shell beetle, and you are busting up your toes. You're busting up your hand, your fingers. Uh, you are going to take two points of damage. Nice. That's a D4 minus one. Um, yeah, so you're going to take two points of damage, but in the end, you just, like, grab this thing and, like, go, go, and you start, like, pulling the stuff, yeah. and that kind of its motion kind of kicks it into moving forward. You have actually cleared 10, and you've dealt with beetles before. Iron shells, you see them all the time. They're used for armor if people can't use fungus like your mother can. So you see this creature and just kind of give it that tap on the shell, um, and with a little sprinkling of spores from your staff that kind of drift down onto it, it kind of snorts its head and shifts around, then starts kicking in the opposite direction. Now, there are only two beetles that are kicking right now, and the other two are going, huh? So I'm going to roll to see how well these little guys do at slowing you down. Uh, this is... Since you have half of them going, it's going to be a straight roll. Well, did you hear? Did you advantage. do anything? Yeah. Oh, I'm we just had... laughing. Okay. <laughs> these beetles are chunky boys! Yes. Oh, yeah! Arcana dice. My god, they do spike it? a lot. 
Oh god. Yeah, so you guys kick these ones into overdrive and they just they just start going at it. And one of them actually like curls up into a ball at one point and just like just kind of spinning its little legs kicking out from its shell. The beating helped. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, one of them is a lazy beetle, but Veneer's like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then just, just starts slowing down the it tilts precariously uh-huh. as the one end is slowing and the other one is still dropping and it, <laughs> things shatter, bits of water <laughs> splintering off into the area, but it <laughs> and then wedges. These guys are like holding steady so much that it <laughs> stops right on a tee, right at that level. As that guy like dives in uh, back into his little entrance there to avoid all the splinters and rock that's scraping off from the uh, wall of Deadbridge a- ahead of him. So, so he kind of dives down onto his belly and oh looks God. at you guys as the dust clears what and happened? the spores are settling. What the? I'm guessing that's... this is not the level we were supposed to be on? It is the level you're supposed to be on. That person who was asking for no, you to stop. No, we were initially intended on going. No, this is not okay. the basement. Uh, this is not uh, down in the bottom of the floor. And there was a thing on the wall, it was a fly trying to get, get rid of it. Oh, God, that was so I'm much saying, fun! It was screaming. It was screaming, how do you know what he is screaming? Yeah, uh, I, was... I was just waiting for these guys, but yeah, uh, yeah after that person kind of... <coughs> Come on, they need your help! They're dying! What? You, this you... is Gilderoy's work again, I'm sure. Uh, what? Stop, I'm follow me, follow me! Why um, are they dying? <laughs> you uh, recognize that this person is what is known as an elf of deep shadow. Um, they are elves who used to be part of um, the Selesnya Conclave, but were exiled for some reason or other, and have kind of joined the Dev Kareen, but they're, they'll never be one of them, and so they don't get the choice sec- uh, sections of land. Okay. They're kind of put on the outskirts sure. of territory, uh, and they're supposed to kind of colonize and make do with that. But this lady stands up, she has like chitinous insectoid, uh, like bits of plating and armor to make up her clothing and a staff as she stands there. Uh, but she kind of looks at you and goes, come on, come on! They, they can only hold them back so much, there were things coming onto my, my land! Slow to down, me. what are you talking about? They're, what are these things? They're animated, uh, they're plant zombies! Oh, that sounds oh, sweet! Plant yeah. zombies? I'm, I'm new here, I'm used to Nice nature. I'm just nice gonna, nature. Gonna what grab her by the arm, just turn around, and start walking with her. Yeah, all awesome. right. We're, we're all these plant, plant zombies. Um, we are actually just new guild members, so we can take Not care of this, right? Yeah, yeah, let's go. Come on. Awesome. She starts kind of running uh, off with Veneer, like, oh, point the direction. Come on, we, stay on target. Stay tell, focused. Can you tell Thingy to wait for us? Well, um, I can tell him. Yeah, he's not that busy. Why do you think that busy? Just wait for us. As you turn around and go, Flander, wait for us. He looks at the ruin of his <laughs> lift and is like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Actually, fix it. <laughs> yeah, fix it. While yeah. you're doing it, fix it. <laughs> you might need to get a quick escape. So. Yeah. so he starts trying to repair the lift that's kind of jammed there and stopped on a dime. Um, you guys are running through this area, being guided by this lady. Um, I am going to roll for her to see if she can kind of keep her wits about her. Yes, she can. She might be panicked, but this is her home. She's familiarized herself with it. It seems like a giant nonsensical maze and a mess to you guys. You guys turn one corner, turn another corner, down you go. There aren't stairs. It's just mushroom kind of pads that have been grown there to to supplement. It's just moss, fungus, all of this stuff over and over. Uh, How far from here was it? Uh, Just just a little bit further in. I'm not far from the wall. All right, then I will cast... uh my wild shape and it's a circle of spores, whatever that means. Actually, do Yes, symbiotic entity. So I activate all the spores as a big cloud of kind of emanates from me and just kind of circles around me. And that'll last for like an hour. I would like to do an insight check to see if she's messing with us and not going into a trap. Go for it, go for it. Um, yeah, the folds of your armor with a mana prod uh, just kind of open up and ugh, starts to exude this aura off of yourself. Uh, what did you get for your insight? I trust her. I got a five. Actually, only <laughs> last ten minutes. So uh, should uh, I still do it? Yep. Um, yeah, you're from the way this lady is acting, mm. you can tell that she is out of sorts. Um, this is not something that she was expecting to have happen. There's no pretense here. Uh, something bad is going on. And just as you're going like, ah, I guess I can trust her, you hear 
other voices kind of echoing off of all of these different tunnels. These are formerly sewers. Some of them were streets at some point. It's nonsensical. There are breaks in it up and down. Um, but yeah, you can hear some people going, just a little farther, come on, come on, wake up. You're gonna get me killed, I'll leave you. So uh, you guys bust out into a chamber. Yeah. Over While here. While we're running too, I'm just gonna activate my staff and the shillelagh and get my shield out. Excellent. Ready for fighting. You guys come onto the scene. Now, um, which of you guys want to go up and which of you guys want to go down? Because there was a street here once that has since actually caved in on itself and then filled like a channel with water. And then there are the sidewalks are kind of what are the vestiges of this once roadway that you can kind of go on either side. Uh, do you guys want to go down in the middle in the water? Do you want to go on the left hand side up. or the right hand side? Are we too far down that I've never been down here? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, you okay. have only scraped the yeah. first like three this layers like or so. You were only two layers down, down yeah. when they found you. Okay. Um, so where do you guys want to go? You know what? I will give you your uh, tokens, and you guys can yeah. place them on whichever side you would like. Stick together? Can we stick together? Um, yeah, I feel like maybe if we just stick together, that'd be a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> Stay behind the shield, guy, for real this time. It seems good, good except that I will be running up this way, up there, except I can't. Oh, oh yeah, going on here now. <laughs> Tinky, try to use your spells from a distance. You can't use your style. I just might have to get the upper, like, um, get out the top so I can actually see everyone. Hold on. And you guys should be good right now. So what, we're all going for the high ground then? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Okay. I feel like no one ever wants to go for the low ground. And this right here is where your friend is. This is what she looks like. She's with the shadow. Okay, so she's we're so right pretty. with her then. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And um, and Avarius, you in particular, you've heard of these people. They are kind of looked down upon by the true Dev Kareen, the actual kind of elven aristocracy that rule down here amongst the Golgari uh, undercity. Um, that being said, you do know oh. of some oh. of their rough people. Put that back up here. What's that? Did you just put up a card out. or something? Yes, I did. Oh, clicked it away. <laughs> this is uh, roughly what they're capable of. These are people who mm -hmm. haven't um, been born into this kind of rot, this cycle of life and death. They're trying, they're doing their best, they have a decent understanding of it, but they are able to kind of, at the expense of their own life force, kind of externalize it and put it where they please. Yeah, we're like over here with her, right? Yeah. Hey, oh, hey. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, may I move you guys? Yes, please. Do it. Bays at the back. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. You, you two gotta stay at the back. <laughs> I would definitely stay at the back. Awesome. So, Very you squishy. guys, um, you kind of trailing this miasma of spores behind you, um, you kind of run to the front of the group as she stands there. <sighs> taking in uh, a breath, and as you guys kind of come to a halt overlooking this scene, you can see that there's one person who's roughly at eye level with you. He looks and goes, oh, thank God, thank God you're here. Help us, they're coming. And he kind of points downward with uh, with his blade. You can see that that guy is actually pretty badly beat up as well. His fungal armor has been kind of ripped and shorn in places. Blood is kind of seeping through. Um, but you can see that there are a couple of them, uh, a couple Golgari um, soldiers who are pulling their way through the, the muck and the wet uh, down in the channel there. Uh, there is one thing that glows on these guys, one piece of metal uh, besides their weaponry, and it is that these guys work for the mitts. They have that symbol. These guys are here to protect these people. Something has gone wrong. All right. How dark is it down there? It is pretty darn dark. You guys do have the light kind of coming in from the side. Every once in a while, there's a stray little beam, but uh, it's it's definitely considered like dim lighting. Dim lighting? Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have you guys roll initiative for me. Okay. Oh God, I got a one. <laughs> 18. 19. 20. 21. 22. 21. I am. Mm -hmm. You have no plus? The, um, uh, oh, yeah, I've got two. And I nice. got a two. <laughs> you got a two? Awesome. Yeah, so it's just a little bit better. Yeah, you're a little faster now. Tiny bit faster. <laughs> Double speed, really. Yeah. <laughs> Big guy. 
Okay. Well, they go together again. Awesome. So you guys arrive on the scene and Veneer, you're kind of looking into this dim lighting here. You guys aren't truly down into the deep, dark undercity uh, where it's dozens and dozens of layers upon layers that are kind of blocking the path. There are still some tiny little bits of light that are sneaking their way in. Some of these mushrooms are kind of glowing a, a slight ambient light. You can just make out things that are going on in the distance. You hear this kind of the snapping, popping of old joints and kind of this crawling, slithering of shifting rock and debris uh, down in the distance. Sounds horrible. What do you want to do? Uh, how far can I move to be able to see kind of what's going on? All right, you've so got like 30 feet of movement. I can see that's like kind of 15, a higher ground or something that might yeah. be able to get me. Probably the edge of the loop, right? Yeah, yeah maybe. If you hop up onto this uh, rock right there, then you could get uh, a good view at what's going on. I'm gonna do that then. Oh, awesome. it's like... Yeah. Is it this rock here? Mm-hmm. Like that? That's right. Now, um, so the lighting okay, down no, here is not so ideal. Do you don't count as being blinded, um, but you do have a minus two on sight-related checks that you're doing down here. So as you kind of jump up onto this rock to get an overview of the battlefield, mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna have you do an athletics check for me real quick. Oh, or uh, acrobatics, my, my mistake. Oh, they're both cra Oh, acrobatics. Okay. That's a 16 plus, so 19. And did you do the minus two? Either way, you... No, it would be a 17. Oh, you've still done fantastically. Yay. So from what you can see in front of you, you kind of leap up, land on some squishy bit of moss, and kind of you almost do a full split, but you just put all of your weight onto your one leg, let that one fly out, and then take your, your solid stance. Looking out, I'm going to have you roll a great. perception check for me. Oh, oh God. Hey, rolling them. Natural oh, 20. Yes. Yeah. All right. It's like a passive of 20 and natural 20 in the dice. I'm perceptive as crap down here. <laughs> you realize as you're standing on this rock that the only thing that's kind of stopping you from seeing properly is the fact that your eyes have not properly adjusted. You went from the light of the openness of Deadbridge into this darker area, but as your eyes are kind of starting to focus in, you see the battlefield ahead of you crystal clear. You've worked in dim environments before. You're a spy. You do stuff at night. Yes, this is, topic. you're no stranger to this. Um, and I will say that because you got that natural 20, you will actually get some insight into these creatures Yay. and how they operate. So the first one that you see is this. Wood Wraith Strangler. Oh, cool. You have a general idea of what it's capable of based on its uh, makeup and its physicality. Strangling. Gross. <laughs> Nothing could be more natural than roots sucking nourishment from the dead. Yeah, so this thing looks like it's kind of breaking apart, but also picking up pieces of dead things along the floor to kind of reincorporate into itself. It can recover rather easily as long as it has biomass to sustain itself. You see across the way, that was this creature up here. Down here, you can see yet another creature looking like this. A shambling shell. Ooh. Well, look at that thing. Ooh. Both gross. Ooh. Hmm. Cool. Tough. Tough. And last, but certainly not least, you hear it kind of <laughs> kind of pushing water before it, and the waves are actually pushing through this channel, splashing against the rocks, splashing against the calves, kind of rising it up to the knees of those soldiers down in that little uh, kind of trench. You see this large fungal creature just kind of <laughs> pulling its way through, wading through as if it were barely being stopped. It doesn't have even remotely human facial traits, just the body, and even that is twisted. The claws are just that. They're digits not for the manipulation of anything. It's just for getting into all of the nice, juicy bits of its prey. Um, this is what you have heard of as a Molder Hulk. Oh, oh. You are not a stranger to the Undercity oh, either. Yeah. You have delved down here from time to time in order to get away uh, around cordons by guards and watchmen and things like that. You've heard of the dangers that are down here. This is quite a dangerous creature. Sure, All right. What else are you going to do there, Veneer? I'm you going to... Got the lay of the land. 
just for the sake of uh, free speech, just yell a little bit at them about whatever information I can get to them awesome. so they have an idea of what's going on. And then, uh, what's the closest one to me? The uh, closest one would be the, the wood wood wraith strangler. Okay, is it eighty? Yeah, it's within eighty. Okay, cool. I'm gonna short bow it. Awesome. Short bow coming in hot. Uh, maybe not eleven plus five. Eleven 16. plus. Yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Nice. All right, sweet. Uh, let's surprised. see what I got. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Um, is he surprised? Is hmm. it a sneak attack? How do, how does that work? Forgot about that. I forgot I'm a rogue, guys. I'm a rogue. Did you bonus action hide? I'm a level two. Yeah, it is. Uh, that's the thing. I would say that because you guys are running in, right. you ran, jumped up onto there. There's so much noise coming from where you guys are in general, and you're not too, too far away from them. You didn't use the bonus action to kind of hide and sneak away. I would say that he isn't surprised. He's okay. in the middle of tracking down prey. That's he okay, knows that this is a thing. In that case, since the bow takes, the arrow takes a second or two to fly, I'm gonna make the shot. Mm -hmm. Then can I hide as a bonus? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. So I hit him and I rolled a one for damage. <laughs> Thank goodness, plus three. So that's four damage. Okay. And then I'm gonna hide. All right. So I can blend into the moss. Now, as you kind of pull that arrow back, fire, before you like jump down and just before you break line of sight with it to hide, you realize that the arrow goes straight through and you can hear it clatter threw it on the other side. There was a hole there, a bit of moss, some fungus came off, but doesn't seem to have the desired effect. All right, mm. we move now to Zeralia. Okay. Yeah. Who is this right here? Is this, this he one? He doesn't see your pointer. Oh. Yeah, I, you have to, uh, get you get to ping. Yoink. That is one of the mitmen. They're called mitsmen. Uh, they, they're okay, the guard. So uh, they're the ones who aren't selected. Us. Especially like you guys are, but they okay. can do military service. I'm going to run over here and kind of duck down to mm -hmm. hide. Okay. Is there, there's a ledge there, sort of? Um, I would say that you would have to move right over to here in order to have a significant enough ledge to hide behind. Okay. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to... We're hiding together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm going to lock eyes with Veneer and give him the wink for Bardic Inspiration. Nice. Yeah, so you run next to him, kind of like baseball. You slide right into cover with him. And as he's like, nice, you just give him the wink. <laughs> um, you're taking the hide action, which is fantastic. Could you roll a stealth roll for me, please? And you rolled a stealth roll as well, yeah? No. When you did the hide action? So if but I could I'm get one out of each of that is a 17. 17. Well. Okay. Not bad, not bad. Mm -hmm. You guys are there. They, you two guys, are pulling forward. Shots fired. Got the lay of the land. Prepping each other up. The elf of Deep Shadow, she's there and kind of takes her staff in and you can see that part of her just, she almost like gags. She starts to become wrinkled in the face for half a second there until she fills back out again. Uh, she is going to take ooh, four damage from herself. Oh, nice. Idiot. Why did she damage you guys She did. Because oh <laughs> this is what the Golgari do. It is life for life. The two of them are intermixed in an internal cycle. The seams are very, very thin. And as she does this, she kind of looks to the person next to her and touches her staff upon your shoulder and <laughs> you feel like this rush of life force. You get another first level spell slot. Oh, wow. Nice. Cool. Yeah, Wasn't that nifty? From there, yeah. her That's movement so cool. is halved. So she goes five, 10, 15, and tries to move a little bit out of the way, but she just, she's, <sighs> she's tired <laughs> um, as she kind of moves off to the side. Um, now the rest of these guys, this guy has to drag his unconscious partner. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And he drags him there. Uh, and this guy wading through the water just, uh, uh, it, not only is he dragging his, dragging his buddy, but wading through that like knee deep water, 
he is going to have to take a constitution saving throw to see if he can avoid from being exhausted. He's been fighting before as well. He pushes through. This guy is determined to save his friend and get him out of here as he kind of climbs up, gets onto the ramp and just, take him, take him, and passes him to the buddy. Buddy is going to grab him and move him. Five, 10, 15. So he's going to move him there. And this guy is going to drop him, kind of gently repose him amidst a whole, like, bunch of mushrooms and stuff to kind of allow his unconscious form to sit there in some kind of comfort as this guy then looks forward and prepares to join the fray alongside you. All right, and Avarius, what are you going to do? I am just going to go uh, run in front of these guys. Because, uh, all right, what happened? <laughs> we were doing a patrol. She was complaining that things were coming close, hearing things in the night. Things were destroying their crops and eating it all, when she couldn't see them. We, we pushed further than we ought to. We dragged in something bigger than we thought was out here. It wasn't supposed to be this way. These things don't animate themselves. You fools. What is it you found? Molder Hulk. Molder Hulk. We're all dead. <laughs> I'll stand on the other side there and uh, get my shield up and I will... I will... There he is. Hmm? I'm hiding. I, I shot at it with an arrow. It didn't seem to do anything. Just a heads up. Okay. <laughs> it did some. It did a little bit. <laughs> There's probably things I could do more. I'll just uh, do do the dodge action. Awesome. You move, get in front of those guys, assume a defensive position, and uh, you do realize, kind of observing the enemies that are in front of you, that some of these creatures have clearly sustained damage. They've been in a combat. These guys were fighting before you guys got here, except those guys decided to kind of retreat and these things are pursuing. Can I tell what kind of damage they took? I uh, do a perception check for me, why don't you? Actually, investigation it would be. Uh, wouldn't that be medicine? What kind of damage they took? You could do a medicine because of what you recognize here. Yeah, 19 as a... All look right. over their bodies. As you look over them, you can see that um, their forms, they're, they're undead. It's moss piloting a bone body, and that bone thing is dead. Like, physical wounds really aren't going to do all that much hitting it with a stick. But where the damage is very telling on these creatures, you can see that there are globs of dripping, sizzling kind of liquids and acids kind of pooling at their feet, dropping off of them. You can also see in some spots where all of that vibrant, verdant moss is kind of becoming black, brown, kind of gangrenous and dead and sludge-like. Off there these are... guys that are injured the... behind me. Yeah, off of these uh, plant zombies. No, the injured ones behind me. Oh. <laughs> I was checking out what kind of damage they took. Oh, these guys. It's its physical wounds. Sorry, I thought you were inspecting uh, what kind of damage totally they did. Totally was. Checking out these Remember bodies. all that you information. You look at all of them and you go, I'm very interested in how you guys are hurt. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can see that these guys have mostly just been overcome with brute physical strength. Okay. They've been clawed, punched, beaten, sure. smashed. Yeah. Uh, and that, I believe, is Andavarius. So we go from that to the first enemy. The Wood Wraith Strangle is going to go. there. And from where this creature kind of shambles up to, it actually kind of lifts its arms back and licks it off with like a whip-like crack, almost shearing off pieces of itself. I mean, it had four arms a second ago and it is launching them at you like weapons. And you can see that it's its legs, kind of roots and tentacle systems are pulling in all of the mushrooms and mosses and lichens uh, from the floor around it to recuperate that loss. It's flicking it at you because you're in front and the most visible. So we've got an attack here. 12 plus three, 15, what's your AC? Um, I'm dodging. Oh, yes you are. Uh. <laughs> 12 plus three. <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen. Ah. It was almost a one, and then the the Arcana dice were just like, nah, you're getting hit. <laughs> okay. And Ovarius, if you know how to kill oh. these things, you should let that us know. That is seven damage. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So he just throws it, and a full like you block some of the mush, but 
in all of that, you couldn't see like the sharp and broken kind of bone slip through and stab right under uh, into the vulnerable armpit area. That is the Wood Wraith Strangler. This thing right here is going to go 5, 10, 15, and jump down into the water. All right, let's have it do acrobatics check. It is not particularly acrobatic. Okay. <laughs> um, this plant zombie barely has legs at all, kind of <laughs> walks over and just slaps its arms to reinforce its legs, and it's just a face with two giant legs and just mm. leaps from that platform across the way, boom, splashing down into the water next to that guy, just kicks up water, oh, silt the muck as the guy kind of tries to cover his face. This and is horrible. Then it's going to try to take a kick at him. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Rolling pretty good, huh? <laughs> All right. That's that's, great. Yeah, he gives this guy a solid boot. He gets his kind of mushroom buckler in the way, but it boom, hits him right under the sternum. <laughs> He's coughing. Uh, that is that creature and the Molder Hulk. Uh, goes. It tries to kind of bash and squeeze its way through here. Okay. The Molder Hulk is stumbling down until it gets to this narrow point where it kind of slams its shoulder against this kind of stone outcropping, which doesn't give, kind of tumbles it over. Uh, that's the end of its first bit of movement. Now it's going to kind of slowly walk its way forward the rest of the way. And boof ends up right there in all of this. There are rocks and bits of things that are getting in its way. It can't see them it's slipping. This is actually pretty decent terrain. You start to realize why those guys were actually going through the water rather than on flat land, because this Molder Hulk is having a hell of a time navigating it. And then it goes right to Tallulah. What are you gonna do? Um, I'm gonna cast Expeditious Retreat and get over here to this guy. One second, I'll be up there. Um, so that I can do dash as my bonus. Mm -hmm. And then I have to, I'm good, wild magic didn't go crazy on me. Nice. <laughs> awesome. And then um, I'm going to do chromatic orb as fire damage. Nice. And do it on this thing. Very good. And um, do I have to, because wild magic gives me advantage on stuff. You do, do I have, have to declare to it say? before. Okay. Um, so I'm... Then I will. Awesome. 19 plus 4. Oh, yeah. So oh, yes. Definitely got it. Happy <laughs> with the event. On the Shambling Shell? Mm, uh, yeah. And yeah, it's the Shambling Shell. And then 3d8. Do it. 3d8? It. It's a powerful spell. It's just because it's a two mm -hmm. hit that it's wow. part of me. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. 3, 5, and 8. Oh, yeah. 5 and 8. Yep, 5 and 8. Okay. Uh, is 13. Yeah. 13. Double over. All right. Fire down. You. Fire, yeah. All of a sudden, kind of give yourself this speedy boost as you kind of fly <laughs> forward. Your little <laughs> tippy toes going tip, 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 as you're just like mostly getting propelled like, forward by this fiery energy that's shooting out of the bottom of your backpack, <laughs> taking you over. And then, as soon as you get next to this guy, you kind of change the direction. Instead of using the fire as a jet, you open it up and. You just kind of brace yeah. yourself, torch this thing, and it's sitting there going kind of whipping into this frenzy, and the whole thing just blasts apart. Uh, it's smoldering bits fly throughout this whole yeah. area as they all kind of start to drift down in this constellation of embers. That thing is messed up. It just yeah. got nice. deleted. Oh, good. Literally. Oh, my God, yes. Yeah. I did it. Awesome. I did something. Hey, would you mind putting it back with, like, an ex beside her since we know there's a corpse there? <laughs> uh, oh, that's for, for, for corpses. looting purposes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or for sure. growing fungus purposes. Yeah, yeah whatever, you know. I mean, whatever happens. Whatever I need it for. Huh? And then yes. I'll just hug the guy in front of me. I've never met him before, but I'm just going to hug him and be like, I did it. <laughs> I did it. Oh, my God. Yeah, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what valuables a plant zombie would have, especially since she's Obliterated. <laughs> yeah. Like it has an ability where it can kind of piece itself rip. together over time. She is <laughs> no, annihilated. That is never going to happen again. Yeah. All nice. right. That's the end of the round. You guys have actually managed to take down one of these creatures fully. 
veneer. Oh my goodness. That thing is huge. I'm going to look at the guy uh, beside me, uh, whatever the heck his name is. Um, did anything aside from fire hurt these guys particularly bad? Do you guys notice anything? Acid! Certain poisons! Right, acid. I've got acid! <laughs> <laughs> Not the time, because whatever. Um... <laughs> Everyone use acid, and I'm just gonna stay right where I am. You're yeah. having a conversation while hidden. Yeah, I'm quietly. Ha- I did this a bunch. <laughs> no, ah, screw it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear a thing. No, You're very yeah. good at projecting your voice. Yeah, that's right. In that case, I'm going to uh, do nothing. But no, I'm gonna fire at it. Okay. Awesome. I'm gonna fire my bow because I can. Let's see. Oh, do I get advantage you this do. time? Yes. Yay. Yay. I'm gonna roll two dice because one might yeah. be better than the other. Yeah. They're nine and an eight. Cool. Plus uh-huh. five, though. Nine does, plus five? Yeah, does a 14 hit? Yes, it does. Yay! So 14 and then... First sneak attack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so what is that? It's an extra D6. And one of these cool ones over here. Bro. That's right. Sneak attack. And so four plus three. Not too bad. Seven. Okay. Seven just piercing damage, which doesn't do a lot. Just plus three? Your dex is only plus one? Uh, cool. Yes, the plus on my bow is a three. All right. His dex is a free. But he doesn't oh, get right. any it's extra additional. Yeah. It's not, yeah. yeah. And then, Veneer, if you want to hop over this little right. gradient here okay. and get behind this lip and then hide again as a bonus action, you can do that. Oh. Uh, you just can't go oop, 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 yeah. in the exact same spot. Right, hide, then hide, I guess hide. I'll have to do that. So, can you move up? Is it free? this one? If you just. Right there, that yep. one. Awesome. Yeah. Hi. And go ahead and hide as your bonus action. It's 11 plus oh, yeah. 5. Not bad. You're still good. All right. A shot rings out from the person next to you before they hop over the edge, and you're there. Oh, my God. Where'd he go? Zerelia, what are you doing? <laughs> I am going to um, put some oil on my dagger. Nice. And I'm going to cast uh, Prestidigitation and <laughs> light it on fire. Awesome. So, bonus action to get access to the, your oil flask. You do a healthy coating all over the blade of that dagger, and then as your action, the thing lights up. For the next turn, you're going to have an awesome weapon. Uh, you do still have movement if you want to, but... No, okay. I don't want to move. Awesome. All right. She has lit that up. Now the allies are going to go next. Um, this poor lady is going to go five, ten... 15 to go Run away. over there. Run, really bad. <laughs> and she sees what you're doing and okay, she's almost killed herself. Oh god. She is maxing out her damage. Thanks for your support. <laughs> she just <laughs> your sacrifice will not be in vain. Save my farm! And she just kind of <laughs> comes next to you and touches her staff onto your shoulder and goes it's my livelihood. That's my life. And so she's willing to give up some of her life for it. Um, as she our farm. touches so you, you get a first level here. spell slot uh, that is tacked on. Cool. Mm-hmm. That is her go. Now the rest of these guys, this guy is out. Um, and this guy is actually going to do a medicine check on him to make sure that he's all right. So medicine check. Doesn't do it. The guy there. Passes the death saving throw, though. Okay. Wait, which one's down? Uh, this guy right here head. is the one that was unconscious and down. Okay. And this guy is now having a breather to be able to try to tend to his wounds. Mm. He doesn't know what the hell to do. He's pulling all of this different stuff out of the way. It's it's a jumbled mess. Um, but that guy's hanging in there. And then this last soldier, he feels your arms kind of around him. He feels the warmth of that fire kind of cooking near him. And he just... <laughs> I'm a man of the mats! Yes, you are! Man of the mats! <laughs> he, uh... He's going to charge up the ramp to attack this strangler here. Save yourself, idiot. Oh, God. He charges up. (laughs) (laughs) That wasn't what I thought. Slices across and it just doesn't do a whole lot of anything at all. And then it goes to Antivarius. You see this guy charging in to try to help out. Makes my choices. When do I not? Makes my choices. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, uh... The one that's down there, I'm just going to reach over, uh, touch his head there, and cast a little healing word. Nice. All Bring right. Bring him back up. 
The mass shadow shall not take you yet, sir. <laughs> for four life with that fella. Awesome. And then I will run up and engage this guy. Nice, the shambler. Uh-huh. Actually, I'll go more down here. And... Awesome. And, yeah, I'll just... I'll, all the spores that are surrounding me, they're just going to get sucked onto my uh, shillelagh there. Just mm-hmm. give that a little extra poison damage and just go beat him. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> go for it. Smack him. Mm, smack, smack him. I'm going to try. In game, I'm nope. quiet. But nope. I nope. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you just smack off of it, hit some, something not important to its anatomy. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, then it goes to that creature. Which At the start of his turn, the spores oh. attack him. Oh, the spores attack! Oh, yeah. All right. Let's do a con save for my Halo of Spores. Ah, it's nice. got decent con. Dude, does he take half damage on a success? I don't believe he does. Oh. And he didn't take none damage. <laughs> yeah, as you kind of Useless. hit with the staff goes off, a lot of the spores kind of poof, puff off to the side rather than landing on him. Um, he is looking between the two of you. You've actually been hit a little bit already, yeah? Uh. My temporary life has been hit. Ah, hmm. Well, he's gonna, he is going to try to jump onto you and strangle. So you can try to avoid this with either athletics or acrobatics. Mm-hmm. Hmm. He's got a plus four. Oh, he's got a plus four? Yeah, no. He's got a plus four. That's a five. All right. Well, he had an, a nat 20. So this creature, as you come forward and try to hit it, just kind of <laughs> starts wrapping around, and that bit of moss that's still on your shield and that bone that's still in you, it just reconnects to the rest of it mm. as it kind of hugs you tight. Oh. Uh, as a bonus action, it's it is hug. going to... I'm going to have you pass a constitution save. You can do it. Yeah, I'm sure. You can totally do it. DC's 10. Maybe. Maybe you can do it. I cannot. That's an eight. That is three damage. And uh, my spores fizzle. We're oh. done. <laughs> yeah, as this thing squeezes and you feel all of the sharp points in it now, um, squeezing onto you. And then the molder is going to start moving through. Um, let's see how we can do with acrobatics. It's not an acrobatic creep. God damn. All right, this thing is <laughs> breaking its legs and its ankles. It's stumbling through the water on these rocks and everything. So it's going to use its action to dash. It's going to try to get next to uh, to Lula. Yep, that will do it. Uh... It pushes through and poof, slams right next to you guys. Then it's your go as this massive hulking moss creature kind of slams onto the ramp and is looking over you with arms raised. Okay. Oh, God. Um... Well um, then. Remember what we talked about from a distance? I'm gonna be. <laughs> I'm gonna be shaking. We don't get one hit. I'm gonna be shaking, but then just like get up a chromatic over again and be like, stay away from me! <laughs> and before you do, I'm gonna make you roll on the magic, uh, wild magic table because oh, nice you had that good. advantage. So if you wanna use it again, you can do that yeah. now. Oh, yay! Yeah. 18 plus 4. <sighs> All right, so <laughs> this thing slams in front of you and this little fart of magical energy goes <laughs> out the back of the of your rig, but then you kind of channel it together and hit this thing dead on. You're using fire damage? Uh, yes. Yeah. Awesome. How long is this uh, expeditious retreat Six, left? six, and one. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, 13. 13 damage? Yeah. Hmm. How long is expeditious retreat left? Uh, it lasts You still, like, four. run away real far. D&D Beyond, to the rescue, reading stuff on your phone. Uh, <laughs> That's well, ten minutes. Ah. All right. That is the end of the round where the Mulder Hulk stands in front of you, and at first it's this intimidating presence that's going, oh, God. And then you don't know who should be scared of who as it lifts its arms up and just just gets flame washed as you're just holding your hand, just kind of flambe this thing, <laughs> this thing's upper body. It is burning, kind of sizzling. It's almost squealing as bits of it kind of wrinkle and coil <laughs> up on the edges. Uh, saps and things are popping um, and going black. All right, Veneer, you're up next, buddy. Okay, so does this thing look as un dead and whatnot as the other things, or does it look a little meatier? This thing is an undead. 
It's just that it's built up to a certain point. At okay. this point, it's it's some symbiotic creature, almost like a man of war jellyfish, where it's made up of like multiple living things all working in unison. Okay. Can I use a bonus action to interact with my like little tinder box to make flame, or does that have to be an action? Yeah, I, I would say that that thing is <laughs> like <laughs> that's that's an action kind of fair enough kind of use. Well, in that case, I'm just going to stay hidden and make a shot. All right. Okay. There are a lot of things in the way, but it's a big creature. I was going to say it's tall, right? Yes, it is. 19 plus... I believe like, you've got advantage. Do I still have that? You hit. Because you're hidden. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Yes. Yeah, and then you get you. sneak attack if you hit. 16 yeah. and Okay, okay that's Either a way, hit. Yeah, 19 plus, so that's good. And then sneak, sneak attack, attack is an extra D6. Going to roll two dice. That's a seven plus a three, so that's ten damage. Nine. Oh, ten. Okay. Hmm? What? Six plus one plus three. Okay. Yeah. Let me draw this <laughs> Let me just yeah, so carry the seven. From where you are, you kind of crank back, see it, and just flames wash out over it, and the second they die down, and you see what's left of its face, you adjust aim, and it just buries up to the little fletching, so you, you see the arrows kind of... It's like an, almost like a flower in its hair. Nice. It's stuck right through the meat of its fungal head. Um, then it goes to Zoralia. You're holding flame in your hand, burning on the edge of your knife. Should I move and hide again? You can. I don't know. Does, does it know where I know that I've attacked? Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. So That's you could probably awesome. try to duck down and go over here or something. Yeah, can I go back to where I was since the shot came from a new spot? Or is that going to... Mm, like, you know what? I, I would else, say you'd have to move yeah. off. I'm just going to duck down and go over there. Cool. And then I'm going to hide. Yep. That is a nine plus five. Oh, plus five. Yeah, okay. okay. They have other fish to fry. What are you doing, Zerelia? I'm going to throw my dagger at this guy. All right. Awesome. So, you have a flaming rapier? I have a flaming, flaming dagger. dagger. Oh. oh. The flaming is the important part. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. Nope. Oh, That's a natural one. Oh no! Get this big thing already. Go. All right. Um, <laughs> you hit Andy? I am going to have you roll a d6. On a one two, you hit Andavarius. On a three four, you hit the other buddy. And on a five six, it just goes through the gap and hits nothing. Six. Oh my oh, god. Okay. So you. <laughs> this is gonna be great. And you're so focused on the theatrics of it all that you like lob it through the air and it just. It makes a great show because the oil is like flicking off of it, so it makes like this fire wheel in the air. It's all. Oh. <laughs> that <laughs> looked pretty. Door. Maybe it distracted him. I don't know. Okay. Um, I, I would have you roll a performance, actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, these things are terrified of fire. It's the thing that does the most to them, actually, more than anything. <laughs> you were amazing at performance, but. Twenty-one. Got him. What's that? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay. Yeah. You throw this thing and since bits of flaming oil spraying off of it, yeah. this creature is holding onto Andavarius and it just detaches from him. Oh. It kind of opens itself up. You are no awesome. longer grappled by it. Hey. Awesome. And As then a it... bonus action, oh, yes. I will cast healing word on the the lady over here. Nice. Yeah. All right. Can anyone cast anything that makes it look like I'm on fire without actually being on fire? <laughs> wow, so that's seven for her. Whoa, not bad at all. She yeah. is looking good. All right. And Zareli, that was a good turn, actually, still. Um, then it goes to the Elf of Deep Shadow right here. She is going to five, ten, fifteen, make it to there. Three damage, but thanks to Zeralia, she's actually still looking good. And you can see she has this like grim determination on her face as she looks at you, receives your, your kind of nice aura of encouragement, and pushes forward, draining from herself that little bit. Stay as she lands her staff on you, Tallulah, to give you a first level spell slot back. Nice. Very badass. Then this guy right here is going to stand up. He's got 15 feet of movement. Gonna go five, 10. 15, right next to there. Then, this dude right here is able to move. 5, 10, 15, 20. He gets right there. These guys have packed tactics with each other. They just haven't been fighting as a group until you guys 
started putting healing words into them, taking care of them, giving them cover. And now you see what these guys are truly capable of as they start slicing this thing apart. So the top guy first, he has advantage on his attack. That is a hit. The second guy, he has advantage on his attack. It's still hit with that uh, 11 save plus. Save us, NPCs! Oh. Save us! <laughs> <laughs> All right. We saved them so they could save us. Yeah. yeah. We helped oh, you to help so us to help you. To help us help That's you. <laughs> wow. Sneak dicks 10. Hey, hey! All right. Um, Those guys, as they kind of approach it, they look to you guys, and you've given them a second chance. Yeah. And they... They want to seize this opportunity. They've got something that these things will never have, and it's hate. It's human or sentient anger. They've got that emotion that pushes them past their physical limits. As they just slash, slash, stab, they bury their blade into the hilt. As it tries to cover over, they just twist up, ripping it apart. Bits of moss and bramble everywhere. This creature goes down. Nice. Uh, all right, then it's the last one who's going to swing at the molder. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't have pack tactics for this one because he doesn't have an ally next to it. Uh, no. Do unfortunately, I count as an ally next to it? I gave him a hug. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's <laughs> one of know, his buddies who I'm they joking. trained together. Yeah, he I'm kind just, of I gave him swings, a hug. <laughs> buries his sword right into the thigh of this thing until you realize it doesn't have arteries. It barely <laughs> got a circulatory system or anything. It just sticks in, just. <laughs> You did it! it That's the ally. <laughs> and Avarius, what are you up to, buddy? Wow. Next to the Molder Hulk. I'm going to uh, use my action to reactivate my spores. Goosh. They <laughs> pop out of all the little mushrooms on me. <laughs> Goosh. And. Anybody looking hurt or anything? Mm. Uh, everybody's pretty good. I got a few off me, but I'm alright. How about uh, some of these? Other guys. Uh, yeah, one of them is at four health. Um, the other one is at eight. The other one is at. Well, the most wounded. What I'll give him seven. a healing word. Uh, five. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. So you bring that guy up. Yeah. So that's five health to that guy, and that's my turn. Nice. Okay. Whoopsie. <laughs> you just deleted him instead. <laughs> There you go. I can get him. I fantasy he's in a different dimension. <laughs> he's at Grim's Tavern. He's drunk. There he is. Yay. He's happy. Yeah. Awesome. And now he's looking better than ever. That goes from Andavarius to the enemies, uh, who are now gone, Enemy. actually. Um, then again, it wasn't killed by fire, so I'm going to roll for this thing to see if it can collect enough biomass to bring itself back up. What? Ooh, it oh. searches out. You, it wasn't burned or boiled or it's it was just hacked day. apart. Yeah. This creature returns laying on the ground with a small amount of health. Let's see how much. <clears throat> All right. It's barely twitching. <laughs> okay. Um, then it goes by fire. Molder Hulk. It is fire. Molder Hulk arms up. You've just hit it with fire. It's going to put both of them together, oh. looking at you, and <laughs> come down at you. Uh, it's it's not even really attacking. This is more you having to get out of the way. If this thing yeah. touches you, there's no block that you can Should do. It's I a dexterity do saving dex throw. Oh, God. Oh! oh. Natural one. <sighs> Because I'm not gonna take stairs. Uh, well, you stay at the back. I <laughs> well, I could have, but I wanted to so, help. <laughs> All right, because it put both of its fists together, that's a D10, a D10. And then it crits, that's 4D10. How much? <laughs> oh my god. She's, she's dead, dead. Five. That's 10. How much damage? There's zombies and stuff. There's still hopes for you. Just four. How much damage? That's 26 damage. Out of your 12? That's more than double. That's more than double. What's that going to be? Oh, uh, that's dead. That I don't really get. Okay. So I, okay. I don't like treating it that way. Uh, as far as that damage whole thing goes, it, it's just a nonsensical Do I have rule to me that it doesn't yeah. stack up after oh, the fact. Okay, so, so I don't I don't automatically no. get a failure. Okay, thank God. Well, you do automatically get like a... 
Mm-hmm. I'll say that you get a death fail yeah. for your saving throws, but you're not just popped. Dead? Okay. Yeah. You get beaten down, though. <laughs> All right. Um, this is a theme. <laughs> that's that Tank. enemy. And it's your go now. Your one death saving throw down, and now you have to roll one. Oh no! If I roll a no, I'm not rolling this time. Oh god, Careful. if I roll another one, I'm dead. Oh boy. I roll the zombies, there's ways to get this. Eight. Okay, so it's I got one. Not a one. Yeah. All right. As that round passes, you've rallied all of these other soldiers, but your one <laughs> soldier, she's all risk and reward. She's risking it big time. Comes back around to you, Veneer, as this thing just <laughs> whoa, <laughs> slams down. Goodness. <laughs> uh, I was slightly thinking that my 3D8 would have just obliterated it. <laughs> but it's, you know, I know. I should have thought better. It's actually pretty darn close. It's I was close. hiding, but I'm here now. Can I can I feed her a health potion? <laughs> yes, <my> absolutely. <laughs> okay, I'm going to feed her a health potion. Yeah. Uh, what kind of quality health potion did we get? Uh, 2D4 plus 2. 2D4 plus 2. Yeah, well, so you kind of run over to her, <laughs> slide down onto the ground, popping that thing open as you go, and just... <laughs> put it right into and her mouth. Because get... this creature's fists are like on her chest oh, and it's lifting them up. <laughs> so you get five. Five health. Oh my god. Alright. And then as a bonus action I'm back. I'm going to uh, death. <laughs> I'm going to hide behind the little dippy part of the cliff that goes down see if I can can yeah. I like maneuver myself down a little bit to kind of get out of the way? Yeah. yeah. Slide <laughs> She's down. leaving me there. Okay. 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 Yeah. Slide along the edge, put the potion in her mouth like a little bottle, and then just do it. I'm just still at legs. That's what she is. She's getting away. Israelia, you're up. All right, I'm going to yell, Doc. And then I'm going to go, You're going to go, Goose. I yell, Get down. I'm going to do a nice little flip over her. Nice. As I'm running, Get and a there. little tumble over her, Jeez, touch you're her. Going far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give her the uh, the healing word as I oh. go past her and land on this guy's corpse. You run. She's not expecting it, but you just That's do seven a more for you. Oh, land, yay. do a somersault over her low. prone body, rolling using the momentum down the ramp. You come up onto your feet, sliding down until you're at the bottom end of the ramp. What do you want to do? As my action, I will go thunder. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And cast na, na, thunder na, 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 na. All right. Yeah. yeah, it's the only thing that's there, so it has to do a constitution saving throw. Yes, of 13. Okay. 13. It's going to take half. Okay. Nice. So, half round it down. Yes, half rounded down. Uh, four. You do four? Yeah. Th- that's what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, as you vault over the Elf of Deep Shadow, <laughs> land for that split second, do the somersault over the prone body of Tink, get in there, slide down, down at the bottom of the ramp, thunder, boom! <laughs> this creature is a chunky, thick thing, but it's all mushroom in the end. And as you... It just peels and splits in layers all down the seams of all of it, and it just huge chunks, fistfuls of it just fly off up the ramp, covering the rest of these guys as they all get showered in it until there's just some humanoid body, like some skeleton digested fully through with little roots, like holes even in the bones of it, as it just crumbles down to the floor in front of you. Nice. And the bow. remaining creature is dispatched <laughs> on the floor easily like <laughs> uh, by your allies who kind of stab, 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 crunch, 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 and they start pulling out their tinder and yes. yeah, lighting yeah. it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, light it all. You guys have done it! Yay! No one died really. <laughs> Very kind close. Of, again. Very close. Join us well, next time when she dies again. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ravnica for you. I'm gonna die every and single episode. And that's we're gonna episode. have that one for the day, guys. Yes. Damn it, See you guys next time. What are we still doing here? We're closing up. We gotta get gone. I, I can resume again next time. I'll be on the lookout for you. There is a place at the core of it all Where the tails and the glasses are equally tall The chances you've heard one he hasn't are slim Welcome to Grim